In this video, I'm going to show you how to build dynamic scripts using parameters. From there, you can take multiple scenes or even multiple scripts and turn them into one script to rule them all. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone? My name is Jeff and this is Slacker Labs, where we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. In any home automation platform, one of the biggest hurdles to achieving that true smart home seems to be automating around all of the different possible scenarios. Especially since Home Assistant doesn't actually have a way to learn on its own, at least not yet, leaving us to do all the hard work of hard coding any of those variations and scenarios into our automation scripts and scenes. But it doesn't take long for that to scale past ain't nobody got time for that. So if you're like me, you may have given up on trying to automate everything and just focused on the biggest use cases. For example, in lighting, I would have just focused on creating scenes for on, off, and dim, and then tried to cram all of my scenarios into using one of those three scenes. But a better way would be to build a dynamic script that can handle any lighting scenario. And we're gonna do that using parameters. So before we get into how to leverage parameters, I wanna just level set for a moment because I'm not sure that parameters is the right word. But what I'm referring to is the idea that in Home Assistant, you can pass data to a service at the time that you call it. For example, if we want to adjust brightness of a light, we call the light turn on service and then just pass the service the level of brightness we want to use. However, in a lot of cases, we just hard code this brightness in our scripts or scenes. But with a simple rewrite, we can combine all of those scenes into a single script. And instead of hard coding these values, we use placeholders and we supply the actual value at the time we call the script. To illustrate this, we're going to take a closer look at a lighting script I wrote to simplify a light transition in my master bedroom. The bulbs I use don't have a built-in transition feature, so I had to DIY one. In my use case, I wanted the brightness in my master bedroom to increase by 8.5% every two minutes over a span of 30 minutes. The problem I needed to solve was how to handle changing the brightness every two minutes. My first thought was to create 15 scenes, each with my 15 different levels of brightness. I know I'm not the only one that would have considered doing it that way, and with copy pasta, it would have made implementing that pretty easy. But Stephen King once said, you have to kill your darlings, and I'm pretty sure he was referring to all of those unnecessary scenes. Although probably not home automation scenes, but the quote still fits. Regardless, I killed the scenes. The next thought was a massive script with 15 service calls to adjust the brightness and then just increasing the brightness each step by 8.5%. This would have been my go-to solution about six months ago. I do like a nice script, but using parameters means that we could take a script that had 92 lines and turn it into one that only had eight. So that's what I did. If you're interested in following along with the code, you can find it on GitHub in my Home Assistant repo at github.com slash the Jeffrey Stone. Just head to my Home Assistant config, click on config, then packages, and inside the packages is my lighting.yaml file, which contains this script that this video is focused on. Master bedroom lights with level. As you can see, this script is pretty simple compared to what it could have been. Just eight lines. We have the name of our script, the all important sequence colon line, if you're writing the script via the YAML, and after that, we just have one service call. In this case, the service we use is the light turn on service because I'm using LED bulbs in these lamps. Into DID is a comma delimited list of my lights I want to adjust. Then we just have the service data section, which includes the brightness. Here, I'm using some Jinja templating language, which if you've done any templating in Home Assistant, will look familiar. What this does is tell Home Assistant to use the value that we've stored in the parameter we have named level for the brightness of this light. And since Home Assistant expects the value of brightness to be numeric, we ensure that what we've stored in this parameter is read as an integer using this pipe int. While Jinja is an extremely powerful tool to have in your Home Assistant toolbox, it's not all that intuitive if you're not a programmer. If you're interested in a deeper dive in what Jinja can do for you, let me know in the comments. But not everyone wants to YAML. So if you wanna build this same script in the UI, this is what that would look like. You have the light turn on service call and the entity IDs. The comma delimited list works here too. 
and we see the same familiar Jinja for setting brightness and ensuring it is a number. And now we have a generic lighting script that's pretty flexible. If you want to know more about how this works with my light transition in the master bedroom, check out my video on helpers since a big part of that automation relies on helpers to reduce the complexity. But to show how we set the brightness using this script, I want to use a different automation. In the same lighting.yaml file, you'll find the master bedroom lights needed automation. The purpose of this automation is to watch for motion in the master bedroom and if the room is dark, to turn on the lights. So let's take a closer look at how we can do that. For ID, I'm using a GUID. The only requirement for automation ID is that it be unique. Alias is, of course, the friendly name. Initial state is set to true. If you're unaware of what this line does in your automations, it tells Home Assistant to turn on the automation when it starts. The downside to using true here is if you've turned off your automation because you don't want it to fire and then you restart Home Assistant, it will get turned back on. Omit this line if you want greater control of your automations. Then we get into the trigger. Here, the trigger is when an Aquara Zigbee motion sensor in the master bedroom senses motion. Then we have some conditions. First, the light level in the room has to be below a value of 13. I'm using the Lux value from the same Aquara motion sensor. If the light level is above 13, it's bright enough that we don't need the lights. Second condition is time. I didn't want the lights coming on in the middle of the night, so it has to be during the day. And lastly, the lights have to be off, or why even bother turning them on again? I do that by putting all of the lights in a group, in this case, a group named Master Bedroom. And if one of the lights in the group is on, then the group will be on. Then, if we've met all of those conditions, we call our dynamic script Master Bedroom Lights with Level and give it a brightness of 255, which is the same as 100%. But you can also use these parameters or variables to help with the decision logic in scripts. For example, you may have seen my text notify script. This is a generic text script used anytime I need to send a text notification. And each time I call it, I can pass three parameters in the same way the lighting script worked. In the service data, we pass who, which is the name of the person that gets the notification, message, which is the actual message I'm sending, and title, which is just a shorter version of message in case the person getting the notifications only reads the headlines. Then in the text notify script that lives in my notify.yaml file, you can see that for each action, I use the value stored in who to determine which set of actions are chosen to run. The benefit is each time I send a notification, I don't have to know the name of the notification service. I just need to know who is supposed to get the notification and what it should say. This makes reusing this service much easier. But you're also not just limited to providing these parameters when you call the scripts. You can set the value of these parameters or variables after an automation triggers based on context in that automation or in other parts of your smart home. As an example, this is my automation that fires anytime a door is left open for more than a minute. My aptly named door open too long automation is in my security.yaml file and triggers any time a door has been left standing open for more than a minute. For the notification to be useful, it needed two critical pieces of information. First, it needed to know which room people were in so that the notification got played where people could hear it. And second, it needed to identify the door so anyone that heard the notification had a chance of knowing where to go without going from door to door. To do this, I needed to pass my speech engine, which handles the audible notifications, the who parameter, which in this case is the room that the notification should be played in, and message, which needed to contain the name of the door that triggered all of this work in the first place, as well as some randomized snark. <laughs> because who doesn't want a snarky smart home, right? But since I don't know the who or the door until it's triggered, I have to rely on context to provide the missing pieces. The door name is easy. I can just pass the friendly name of whatever entity triggered the automation. Knowing which room to play the audio in is a bit more complicated. For that, I rely on a template sensor that uses motion sensors and the last changed timestamp, as well as some other rules to make a best guess attempt at which room is occupied. At any given moment, this sensor lists a room. So when this automation triggers, we just use whatever value is in our sensor and hope it's right. No doubt, someone watching this video right now just perked up wanting to know more about that particular sensor. 
because in a house full of smart speakers playing notifications, knowing which room to play those notifications in is kind of important. As far as I know, the Amazon Media Player integration in Hex is the only one that attempts to solve this for you. But that only works if all you have is the Amazonian assistant in your house. I evidently run a home for wayward digital assistants, so they all live here, which complicates things. If you want to see how I've built that particular sensor, you can find it in my audio.yaml file in the packages folder of my Home Assistant config on GitHub. I plan on covering that sensor in more detail when I finally get around to doing a video on how I use Amazon Polly to do audible notifications in my home. Which, frankly, just writing a coherent script makes that whole thing seem a bit overwhelming. In any case, I think that's all the time we have for this video. I hope that gave you some ideas on how you could use parameters to build dynamic scripts, make your home smarter, or maybe even just consolidate some of those lines in your configuration. My configuration currently sits at 15,000 lines, so I probably should get back to work. But before you go, if you want some more ideas on how to make your home smarter using Home Assistant, check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're a repeat viewer or here for the first time, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.